welcome back. And if your bill has made it all this way to the floor, congratulations. Your bill is actually in the minority of bills that make it this far. You got it through the, the policy committee, you got it through the fiscal committee, you withstood the bad amendments, you got the good amendments, you're good to go. It's hitting the floor. All that's gonna happen is everybody's gonna talk about how great it is and how handsome you are and you know what a great argument you gave in testimony and they're gonna pass it out, right? Maybe, maybe. Let's hope that happens. But it's not uncommon for big changes to happen on the floor. And I mean big changes can happen on the floor. Why is that? Well, let's go back a little bit to the committees. Who serves on the committees? Subsets of the members. Some of them have never really got a chance to speak on this bill or offer their own changes. So it is very common for people to offer sweeping changes even at the last minute. And it's very common for the chair, the ranking member, the sponsor of a bill to take those changes because they're looking to make a deal. They're looking to get the bill out because if they don't get the bill out, it's dead. And the people that are offering those amendments know that. They may prefer no bill to getting a bill without their amendments. So they're quite willing to run out the clock and hold a bill hostage. And meanwhile, a whole lot of the other members, they care about this bill maybe, but not to the point of wanting their own bill to die. Because every member there has got something they want. They've got bills of their own that they're following. And they don't want to eat up all the time on your bill. So all of these are kind of factors playing out and the person offering these last minute changes knows it. Maybe somebody's got 30 amendments and somebody's saying, look, we don't want to waste the time doing all 30 of your amendments. What if we agreed to four of them? Will you pull the rest? So they have to run around and decide what are we going to take at the last minute? Who's going to vote for it? Because you may add some votes, but it's very common for votes to fall off as well. And you need to have a majority of the elected membership. It is a tremendous chaotic thing, especially in our position, my position, your position, from the outside, trying to figure out what's going on. And all of a sudden the bill comes up and all of a sudden there's a striking amendment for, that completely changes it. Maybe you had your bill, I think one of the examples I used was laptops for every student so they could zoom in. And you got it all the way through and at the last minute they come in with a striking amendment and they're making it a study. They're not gonna do laptops for every kid. They're going to study the idea and they bring it up and they slap that amendment on it and they pass it out 97 to one. And you're, and you're sitting there going, what just happened? Well, I told you what just happened. They did all this horse trading and things behind the scenes. They made your bill a study at the last minute and they got it out because that's maybe what they thought they had to do at that point in time to get it out. And you have to decide at what point have you changed the bill so much that you don't want it anymore or it's not worth having. That can happen. Or is having something better than nothing? Is studying this at least something? So you can study it and decide that maybe, you know, we do need laptops for everybody and maybe come back next year with that study and that report and say, see, we studied it and we really need it and it's really a good idea and please vote it through. All these kinds of things happen and they happen typically at the last minute and they happen on the floor like that. So when I said that there's no surprises, I meant for them. For you, there's surprises. <laughs>